A swine flu hotline in Essex has had more than 400 calls on its first day. The aim is to take the pressure off doctors' surgeries. It opened as the Bishop of Chelmsford urged the county's clergy to take swine flu precautions in church. This swine flu call centre went live at 7am this morning and the phones haven't stopped ringing since. From about 7.30 onwards, we've been constantly busy. All the operators have been receiving calls um, with very little space in between. But it seems one call centre isn't enough. Upstairs, more phones were being unpacked. It's hoped the hotline will be the first port of call for people in North Essex who suspect they may have swine flu. But what they mustn't do, please, is to contact their general practitioner either in person or to telephone the GP. And most certainly don't go to accident and emergency or call 999. This is one of three swine flu centres across Essex. This one's in Colchester. There's also one in Clacton and one in Harwich. And the idea is that a friend or relative of someone who has swine flu will be able to come to one of these centres and pick up antiviral drugs. Now swine flu is even affecting church services. The Bishop of Chelmsford is urging clergy to make sure communion is hygienic. Clean hands, clean chalice, and that will be quite safe. Um, uh, there's no problem with that, but it sh will reassure the people that they can take communion. In Essex, swine flu's grip seems to be tightening. Gareth George, BBC Look East. After three years and a bill running into millions of pounds, the future of local councils in Norfolk and Suffolk still hangs in the balance. The Boundary Committee was due to make a recommendation today on whether both counties should have unitary status, but it's been delayed by a legal challenge. Who grits the roads, empties the bins, runs our schools? All these services are run by a mix of local and county councils. Norfolk and Suffolk are made up of 14 districts and boroughs. The government says that's inefficient and wants them replaced. The Boundary Committee suggested either a single council to run all Norfolk or two councils, a donut of Norwich inside and rural Norfolk around it. In Suffolk, it recommended two unitary authorities, a sort of Greater Ipswich merged with Felixstowe and another for the rest of the county. But three local councils in Suffolk said their ideas were ignored. A High Court judge agreed with them. All we have sought to achieve is a fair hearing for the proposal that we have espoused. Um, our preferred option has always been um, a Western authority to represent this part of the area, an Eastern authority to represent the coastal areas of Suffolk, and um, a Greater Ipswich Unitary Authority. So what's the argument for unitary status? Those in favour say super councils would cut bureaucracy and save millions. Well, Norwich is a city of huge potential economic and social development and what we want to make sure is that we're not spending £100 making £10 decisions which seems to be the way that uh, we operate with two tier councils and effectively four councils having a finger in the pie of the future of Norwich. If the Boundary Committee appeals, realistically nothing will happen until the autumn. And with the general election not that far away, the government may have more pressing concerns by then. Alex Dunlop, BBC Look East. A man has been arrested on suspicion of committing two rapes in Ipswich more than 19 years ago. A teenager was raped in Gipswick Park in 1990 and another woman was attacked in 1986 in the area around Stoke Park. The man was arrested this morning. The funeral has been held today for six-year-old Alan Locke, who died after falling into the River Stour in Sudbury last month. He'd been on a supervised walk with his Beaver Scout group when the accident happened. Today's service was held in Acton, where he lived. A former ambassador and an ex-army medic are two of the choices for voters in the Norwich North by-election. As Ian Barmer reports, both are calling for a change in the political scene. On some streets in Norwich North, support for the UK Independence Party appears to be strong. Candidate Glenn Tingle believes the party's anti-immigration, anti-European stance is going down very well. Hello, I'm Glenn Tingle. I'm the UK Independence Party candidate. A former soldier, now with his own construction firm, he's local and proud of it. Apart from the time I spent in the army, I've lived there for 46 years, I run my own business and I have a local knowledge. We're the only party prepared to stand up and say what the people of, of particularly Norwich North of, want to hear. We're the only party addressing the immigration issue with any sensible solution to it. One of his opponents used to be our man in Tash Kent, the former British ambassador to Uzbekistan. 
Craig Murray was born and brought up in Norfolk, became a diplomat, but was sacked for highlighting human rights abuses. Four years ago, he stood against Jack Straw in Blackburn on an anti-war platform and took 5% of the vote. The trouble is, Parliament is full of low-quality MPs who are in it for the money. What we're saying is don't vote for a politician. Vote for an honest, independent, local person with a great deal more life experience who's going to vote in Parliament honestly on his own opinion and the opinion of the people in Orange North, not the way a political party tells him to. Both candidates are offering a clear alternative to the status quo and in the current climate that could prove very tempting to voters. Ian Barmer, BBC Look East, Norwich. I'll be back later in the programme but now it's time to return to Stuart in Peterborough. Hello and welcome back to Peterborough. Now, if you go up the road just over my shoulder and head south for about 60 miles, you will come to Luton. And of course, the worry there is the